about some comments about the Illinois game and champions effort defense outstanding uh, performance again uh, playing a very high level um, Taekwon graded out a champion and uh, him and Joey are playing a very good uh, bookend defensive ends for us Adolphus Washington it was great to have Tommy shut back he only played 25 plays but he graded out very highly uh, Mike Hill graded a champion again Sam Hubbard Darren Lee is playing out, outstanding football for us. Our captain, Josh Perry, uh, Gary on Conley was tremendous. Von Bell, tremendous, and Tyvis Bell played very good. We had three uh, co-players of the game, uh, multiple players of the game. We had Eli Apple, um, uh, was playing as well as he's played. Joey Bosa just dominated the game uh, and disrupted the game. And Raekwon McMillan. So our defense is playing very, very high level against a team that uh, just really had their best performance the week before, uh, Illinois. Offense receivers, you had three of them. You had Jalen Marshall, Mike Thomas, and Curtis Samuel, all grayed out, champions for us. Offensive line, we had two, Taylor Decker and Pat Elfline. And the player of the game was Zeke. Um, special teams, special teams, special teams. Uh, Special teams player of the game was Curtis Samuel. He blocked a punt, started on three units, great effort, 23 production points. And uh, just a special mention for Denzel Ward. A couple comments on the game. Uh, offensively, uh, the obvious was, you know, it's hard to distribute balls when we're getting pressured. And so we're going to take a hard, long look at our pass protection a little bit. But other than that, uh, we controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. You win most of those games. Matter of fact, almost all those games, unless you turn it over. And we did dominate the line of scrimmage in the run standpoint. Zeke was outstanding, 180 yards, and was just constantly in my ear to keep going at the end. And I pulled him out because I can't imagine walking in front of you guys here if we something bad would have happened. So we did the right thing and, and pulled him out of there. Um, and then uh, this week, um, Jerry handled me some uh, incredible stats here for our senior class. Last game in Horseshoe. And they'll be uh, honored. And sometimes you honor senior classes and you honor because I guess you have to honor senior classes. Then other times you honor senior classes because of their contributions to a great university and a great uh, football program are kind of over the top. And this one is uh, 48 wins since their freshman year, uh, which is an Ohio State program record. Um, a record 30 game win streak, which is Big Ten. And I think someone said a national record. And then they've been a part of two winning streaks. Uh, 24 and 23 games, which is both uh, Ohio State records. So uh, if you, I always joke around with our players, say, hey, how's it going, seniors? It's going pretty good. And these kids, uh, these kids really, I look at these names, it's going to be a tough day. Uh, seniors day is always a tough day, especially for the guys that are really, really invested. And you look at some of these guys, and from the fifth year guys, Joel uh, Braxton, Chase Ferris, Nick Vanette, Bryce Haynes, all wonderful people. Um, and then your fourth year guys are Monty, who's not playing, but he's still very involved. Warren Ball, Cam Williams, a uh, real soldier for us. Tommy Shutt turned out to be a, a great kid for us. Adolphus Washington, Jacoby Boren, Taylor Decker, and uh, obviously Josh Perry. So incredible group of people. And uh, most prepared team will win this next game we play. Very, very good team we're playing. And uh, we've had some great games with them. A lot of respect for the way they play and uh, their personnel because they're, they're outstanding. So I'll answer any questions for you. It's human nature to play to the level of your competition as much as you fight it. You've been athletically superior to every team you've played so far. The last two, they're pretty comparable. Are you concerned about the fact that now the bar is higher? Are we ready for this jump? Sure. I'm very concerned. Uh, but that's I, I live my life concerned. So. You know, yeah, we go out and practice. We're facing a very the best defensive line maybe in college football. You know, I think theirs and ours are very comparable and uh, just very, very good players and and one of the best quarterbacks in Big Ten history. And his what, someone showed me his winning record is that's how you evaluate quarterback. Evaluate a quarterback is do you win games because that's his job and he's he wins almost every game he plays. In the back of your mind, even though you're focused on the moment. Have there been times this year when you've thought, when you're watching, evaluating your team, well, is this going to be good enough against Michigan State? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I told you, it's, 
is this going to be good enough, period? Uh, and, and Michigan State is, you know, that's the top of our conference. And uh, obviously the next two games we have are big, big time games. And uh, yeah, it's, that's human nature to say we see what's coming. I think what our guys have done, because you see it across the country, the consistency and winning is, it's very admirable for the way our guys. And, you know, I saw, I think it was Finkus. I had Finkus. I was, I was over my friends after the game and with my son's uh, best friend's family's house, and we're just there. And I get home after Illinois, and I, he turns on the channel, and I think it was Matt Pincus and maybe Stanley Jackson. They do like a show or something. Well, I, you might have been there. And it, yeah, and he said, yeah, we just got to get on a roll here. <laughs> and the guy looked at my, my friend looked at me and said, get on a roll here. Yeah. So it just tells you, I guess we got to get on a roll. So. To answer, your, to answer your question, uh, you always, when you watch and evaluate a team, um, is it good enough to beat the best? And we got one of the best coming in here Saturday. Front row middle, Dave. Urban, you mentioned the pass protection issues. What has been the biggest problem up front with the pass protection? Oh, let's see. Uh, it, it's not just one thing because, you know, sometimes we get our tight ends involved in it and, and they weren't great Saturday. And then... Uh, you know, just guy getting beat here and there, and in, in, in the lap of the quarterback. So we just gotta, just get a little firmer. You know, with the same, it's almost like I challenge Coach Warner and our staff. Do we spend the same amount of time and focus and energy? Because you watch them come off and run block. It's maybe the best there is, and uh, we're not that way in our pass pro. So we just we're gonna work at it real hard, and this is a, this is a real week to work at it. Are you considering personnel changes, or is it just the guys you have need to get uh, better? No, no. We, you know, uh, Jamarco Jones is the next man in, and he's getting better and better. But at this point, no. Front row right, Austin. Urban, uh, it feels kind of strange to sit here and have like, no real questions about your quarterback. You finally, have some stability there. There's no suspension, no Cardell's arm strength, none of those conversations. Did you? Admit, I know you thought both would play this year. Did you think it would take into November before you find something and be a little settled there at that position? Did I think that? Not really. I didn't really think that far ahead. You know, I've, uh, I know it's the, the amount of hours spent on that conversation, on that thought to make sure we're doing the right thing is probably inordinate. I mean, it's just, I, I, if I've ever put a little mark of how much time I've spent personally and then also as a staff on, first of all, doing the right thing, and then second of all, how we've managed that situation. Then all of a sudden you hit the speed bump a couple of weeks ago. And, but you got to move on. I mean, that's, there's not a whole lot of conversation about that now. What does it change if you, if you say it's an inordinate amount of time? If, that, if that's gone, you don't have to think about it. What does that mean for you? I got a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it's, it's a comforting level. It's com and, and I really, what I think what's really comforting about this whole thing is the way Cardell Jones has handled it is the fact he's gone in the game, he's won us a game. Um, the way they practice, the way they maintain that incredible relationship, because that, for the normal human, I imagine that would separate, drive a stake between two people that are very close. And that tells you a little bit about the character, who they are, and their love of their unit, and their love of the team. So uh, th those are things that I really watch for, as much as the, the actual completing completion percentage turnovers those kind of things because you want to you've heard stories now you want to destroy a team you have someone with some other issue or some other purpose than to be a team first player and we don't have that uh, second row left Lori coach um, out of curiosity are you going to honor anyone on Saturday that's not a senior but maybe departing because I'm sure you want to give everyone a chance to to bow out and get the applause. Play I don't play. think so. I, I think uh, I, that's not my call. I think that's just the way we've done it in the past here. I think uh, you have to be a senior or at least four years in the program. And out of curiosity, when you research an opponent, what beyond watching the film do you do? Oh, we know most. Uh, if it's someone from out of uh, our region, you know, we'll maybe do a little homework on them if you don't have enough film on them in high school and what's his background, those kind of things. But these kind of, you know, we know those players at Michigan State. So film's about it. Back <coughs> Urban, uh, with your previous two national championship teams, were, were you faced with this kind of doubt and, I don't know, maybe not disrespect, but that has gone on this year because of your schedule? And, and in, some people have called it spring training. I 
I'm not saying that, but what what did you get from the first ten games? And, and also, was there ever this much doubt about your quarterback? Well, the only one was comparable was 006. We lost everybody. Uh, we lost the majority of our team for 07. <coughs> yeah, and then the 09, we did bring a lot of guys back. And uh, if I remember this, no one ever questioned the schedule. It was just, uh, was it ever, was everything ever good enough? I just nonstop. You know, I'll never forget we beat Tennessee, I believe, by two scores. And, you know, I walk into press conference and say, what happened, coach? What's the problem here? And, you beat Tennessee by two scores, and we just won 28 to three on the road by you know four scores, and you know I'll hear someone say, well, you know, how did they? I, I just was watching TV that night, and Ohio State just kind of gets by or something. I'm thinking, my goodness, we just won 28 three on the road, and and we know we can play better. Oh, exceptional defense. Our defense has gotten better and better and better, and you win championships with great defense. We proved that a year ago. That's, that's time-tested. Very, it's, a, it's an unusual situation when a, when a team can compete for a championship with a bad defense. We learned that two years ago. We had exceptional offense and, and very poor defense, and we lost. And uh, last year, we finished the season with the best maybe three-game run of defense that I've seen. Um, against three Heisman guys and, and uh, just outstanding performance and we won. So defense is where it's at and they're playing at a very high level. Front row right, Tim? Yeah, Urban, following up on that, what is it when you watch your defense right now, what is it that you just see that you didn't see three years ago? Is it an aggressiveness? I mean, obviously they give up a play every now and then, but what is it that just jumps out at you as a coach? Uh, yeah, I think great question, Tim. I think, for, I think our personnel is very good. Um, I think the coordination between the front seven and back seven are, is exceptional right now, and that's uh, and that's not easy to do. We made a decision uh, several years back to make it a back out uh, back end in type defense, where a lot of teams for years would just stop the run, stop the run, and leave your corners on an island. Um, so I just see a lot of work's gone on between Luke and Chris as far as coordinating a very good defense. It's very sound and doesn't constantly leave people on islands and that's what I think I like obviously personal number one you know you brought it up you know about watching channel six and they real special the other night and all that kind of stuff and I'm just do you have time are you giving yourself can you take the time to enjoy a 30 game win streak in the big 10 regular season and a 23 game win streak and I mean if you were sitting there watching that <laughs> you know from the outside I don't know. What would you take from that? What does that tell you about a program when it has something going like that? Well, I'm, I'm more uh, mature is probably not the right word. Experienced or aged or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's water off a duck's back, man. I mean, I just looked at kind of the guy. I didn't bring it up. The guy looked at me and goes, do you hear what he just said? And I said, no, what? And he told me. And I said, you know, that's life in the big city. You know, that's uh, expectations. There's probably 10 places like this in America that, you know, you keep, 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 keep building a beast and you got to feed it. So, you know, our, our focus, the really good thing about myself, our staff and our players is the focus is not on anything. Are we playing good enough? Are we, we know there's issues. This is not a perfect team. I've never seen a perfect team. Matter of fact, we got a long way to go. There's certain areas we're not playing very good. And that's why we practice all the time. But do you, do you in the midst of it, can you feel you're part of something special? Oh, sure, you know? I do. And then, and then when Jerry hands me this, that, you know, the first thing I do is look at the names and faces of those people that were there. And I called it blind faith from the day we walked through the door because they, they probably couldn't stand us compared to, well, you know, the previous staff. And uh, excellent staff. It's just we were so much different. And then they stuck it out, stuck it out. And some guys didn't stick it out. Some guys decided to move on and go about their own journey. And so that's my first thing is always thinking about those guys and what it's going to be like to put your arm around them in the stadium. Front row left, Bill. <clears throat> Chase Harris is a guy who's talked about how that's been successful for him as a first-time tackle out on that island sometimes. As you evaluate it, how do you think Chase has been in that area? Uh, last Saturday was not great. Uh, there's been some games he's played outstanding. I think he's a great champion a few times. Uh, tackle's a tough place to go, you know, once against third. They had two very good defensive ends, Illinois. I think very under uh, undervalued or what's the – we certainly had great respect for him. And then after we watched him play, they were they were really good. So. Uh, for the most part, he's done fine. Uh, he's got a big week ahead of him because the guys he's going to be facing are really, really good. Two NFL players at defensive end this week. 
You guys obviously lost Tom Herman, and there was some adjustment there working in a new coordinator. <coughs> Michigan State lost Pat Narduzzi. I'm just curious, um, losing any coordinator, how difficult is that to, to adjust to? And then have you seen any difference with Michigan State now with Pat Narduzzi? Not uh, there? Great question. It is it is probably more than I give it credit for, especially because Tom was, Tom was really good. And, and the coordinators I've had are, have been outstanding. You know, Dan Mullen was outstanding, and the minute we lost him, and then I had Coach Adaz, Steve Adaz, it was outstanding. So yeah, you do lose them, even though we don't really change offensively. It's the Ohio State offense, but uh, Tom added a lot, and you can see the success he's having. But we're we're doing much better now. It, the first few games was a little rugged, uh, just the mechanism, logistics of how to do it. Uh, Coach, uh, Michigan State losing our third D coordinator, really no difference. Uh, that, that's, I think, Coach D'Antonio will be the first one to tell us Michigan State's defense. And they're running a very high level um, against uh, who they played. played Maryland, and it was, uh, I think, 80 snaps, 65 or 70 blitzes. So it was uh, very aggressive. And they're not normally that aggressive, but that's kind of putting us on our toes. So that might come. So, but it's the same scheme. Urban, we know how well you guys played in the postseason last year, but the Michigan State game last year, to go up there and win that game and play the way you guys did, how much was that sort of a launching point for what you did? And how well did you guys play last time you played Michigan that was, State? That was our best game offensively. That was uh, by far. That was we threw for over 300. We ran against an, an a, a, not a good defense, a great defense. That was, uh, you know, you just kind of watch it. We're not there right now. We've got to get there fast when you start playing teams like this and a talented team like this. So that was that's one of the first things I when I came and watched that uh, uh, Sunday morning is my goodness that was uh, J T was r ridiculous. Our receivers played great. The offense line blocked that defense line and and once again against a, not a good defense, a great defense. And you mentioned their defensive line, how good your defensive line is. When you talk about a great defensive line, like what is it that? <coughs> that stands out? Is it pass rush? Is it stopping the run? I'm sure it's parts of all of that, but what really makes it? I think the term is disruptive. What makes Joey Bosa, he's only got so, so many snacks, sacks, but uh, at least two. Sometimes they, they, I saw a video where there were three guys locked him, you know, just blocking him. He took one where he took his, uh, uh, right, it came from the left side and just took a 300 pound man and threw him in the backfield and made a tackle on the back. Completely disruptive is what makes a great defense alignment. And that's what this outfit we're facing this week are. Braxton um, had just had two touches. Um, this is his senior day, obviously. Um, what would you want to say about about getting him involved, where he is, and, and his evolution? Well, he's doing great. You know, it's, uh, it's when uh, you're having trouble. There's times where it was designed, and the defense actually was going to go to him, and we couldn't get it off because of the uh, protection issue. So, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think we're. A team, you know, I, I don't think, I know. You know, Joey, someone said Joey Bosa only has so many sacks. There's zero conversation about that. Uh, we're 10 and 0, chance to go 11 0, and if that's the whole idea is, you know, more touches, more sacks, and all that, then we'll be 10 and 1 when we're done. So we're going to do the best we can, and he's going to keep grinding and working and, and developing as a receiver, and we've got to protect and distribute the ball a little bit.